Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am happy to once again be with you to bring you another author interview. Hope you had a great weekend. It is Tuesday of another week, another week in June already, and um, I had a very nice weekend. We're finally feeling better, my husband and I, so we actually left the house. We're we, we both tested negative for over a week, so we actually left the house, um, except that then on Sunday we didn't leave the house. We stayed here and we hung out at the pool in the afternoon and we met some new German neighbors. Uh, they're not exactly neighbors. They're they're staying here for a week, but they're staying in uh, the house of friends, some friends of ours. So we met them and hung out with them and uh, had dinner on Sunday. And yeah, just a really good, relaxing weekend, which we both needed. I mean, we've obviously been spending a lot of time resting because of being sick, but not necessarily relaxing. So soaking up some sun and doing all those lovely poolside activities like sleeping and eating. <laughs> it was it was nice. I did get a little bit too much sun, but um, I'm not bad. I, I try to stay in the shade and wear a lot of sunscreen, but I didn't put sunscreen on. I put sunscreen on one fewer times, one less time than I should have. So you know, I got my I got one spot that's burned. But at any rate, we're not here to talk about my sunscreen habits. We are here to talk about books. And today's author is uh, Rick Lenz, and we're talking about his book "Hello, Rest of My Life." Let me give you the description of that book. When Danny Matry, an ambitious young 1970s film actor, met Samantha on a blind date and fell in love, he decided he no longer cared about Tinseltown stardom. He still acted sometimes, but he became a writer too. Now married and in their 70s, they find a dog whose faded tag has the name Tally and a Beverly Hills phone prefix from 50 years earlier. Writing a time travel novel in 2021, Danny gets a call from a mysterious velvet-voiced acting agent. He has a meeting tomorrow in Beverly Hills. Tally, in one of their singular conversations, questions Danny's motives. Now, Danny is in Beverly Hills, not at the meeting, but in the elegant home where he lived in 1974, 47 years ago. He is 27 again, bewildered, but with a second chance at his Hollywood dream. He doesn't want it, because Sam is not in this world. Unhappy in his new now, he realizes his journey back to Kansas hinges on the magic of film. A sharkish agent helps him navigate Hollywood's rocky shoals. A worldly wise teen and a new age fortune teller offer spiritual advice. And a sexy wicked witch throws a monkey wrench in his path. That is the description of Hello, Rest of My Life. It is uh, time travel. I mean, there is time travel present. It's not science fiction. It is really more character driven, more literary fiction, uh, some romance. You get this story of a second chance, story of decisions and choices and relationships and how every decision that we make affects our relationships, affects the paths that our lives take. And so, uh, yes, it is time travel, but that's really more of a vehicle for the rest of the story and the rest of the characters and how that all plays out in this in this novel. So let's go ahead and uh, turn now to the interview with Rick, and he can tell you more about this novel, how it came about, etc. Again, the author is Rick Lenz. The novel is Hello, Rest of My Life. Hi, Richard. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you, Sarah. It's very nice to be with you today. You know, and actually, I said Richard, but you, you, your author name on your book is Rick Lenz. I was reading yeah. while I was talking. Um, your Skype or your Zoom name is Richard. So, do you prefer Rick or Richard? 
I, I'm used to Rick. I, I've been called that most of my, I was called that since I was six, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's what I'm accustomed to. So that's okay. fine. I, I answer to both. That's what I get for reading and talking at the same time. <laughs> um, well, welcome to the podcast. I'm really happy to have you here. We're going to talk about your novel, Hello, Rest of My Life. Before right. we do that, though, if you could share a little bit about yourself, that would be wonderful. Sure, happy to. I guess I'm in, uh, in the, uh, an older generation now. I never, I, sometimes I can't even begin to relate to my actual age. I'm not going to say out loud, I don't think, but uh, it's just, you know, you don't believe that's going to happen. And then one day you say, oh, my God, I just I always say I spent so long being young. I can't used to get used to not being young anymore. It just is a shock constantly. But anyway, I was born in, in uh, Illinois and raised mostly in Michigan. And I was going to be a doctor. I saw my father do a medical procedure and fainted. So I dropped out of pre-med and I was directing a civic theater after I got out of the University of Michigan and, and as a theater major and uh, directed a theater for a couple of years in Jackson, Michigan. And then I went to New York to try to be an actor. And uh, pretty soon I got, I got work uh, after knocking around a bit and doing a lot of those jobs all actors do to try to keep alive and, uh, and support a family. I had a wife and two sons when I when I went there and but things got grinding up and in the meantime I was uh, while I was trying to become an actor I was always writing since I was directing that theater I wrote little plays you know boy meets girl girl meets boy hello how are you would you like some coffee that kind of stuff and uh, and then I finally you know finally began to get a little a little better but I had to I had to have a little something under my belt before I could before I could, I had anything to say. I was just, you know, that, that thing of writers have to have something to call on, and I, I really didn't. And since I write mostly kind of not uh, researching stuff, and, and that's not to say I don't research. When I have to, I do. But uh, for this book that I'm talking about, or I'll, I'll maybe get to that a little bit later, I didn't have to research that much because it was about my own life. I was in a couple plays in New York, and then I got a job in a play called Cactus Flower on Broadway many years ago. And, uh, and then I got chosen to be uh, the only person in, from that cast in the uh, movie production with uh, Walter Matthau and Ingrid Bergman and Goldie Hawn. And, uh, and so that was instigated my coming to Los Angeles. And uh, and then I acted for a lot of years in movies and television, and I always was doing plays around the country too. And then meanwhile, I had a play done off Broadway, and then another one, and then I had one done on PBS. And uh, so I was getting some support that way. But in the last few years, since I've been writing pretty much full time, uh, you know, beginning about 15 years ago, I decided I just wanted a, a, a bigger challenge for me. I'd written a lot of plays and it's, it's a difficult process to go through all that you have to do to get the thing up on stage. So um, I started writing novels and, uh, and I had been playing at it for years before that, but this time I, I wrote a, a novel based on a play that I'd written and then I started to write just plain novels. I don't write a series. I don't think I'd be capable of doing that. I uh, write, you know, different stories as they occur to me. I think I could just shut up for a minute and let you <laughs> ask me something or. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fascinating. Actually, I, when I, when I looked up your, your website before the interview and, um, and saw that, you know, you'd, you'd done some acting and then I looked you up on IMDb and you've, you've had a very interesting life. So, I mean, we could, we could do a whole podcast on your life, but um, we should also probably talk about the book. <laughs> yeah, it's like a good idea, doesn't it? It does sound like a good idea, but before we get there, we are going to take our first break. When we come back, Rick will be giving an overview of the story and uh, his inspiration for the novel. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. 
Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Rick Lenz about his new novel, Hello, Rest of My Life. Let's return now to that interview. So uh, it is called Hello, Rest of My Life. Can you give an overview of the story? I sure can. It really is as much as anything I've ever written. It's based on uh, autobiographical stuff. I met my wife, Linda, uh, 42 and a half years ago. And we had a blind date. I think it was maybe my first or second in my life. My first had been years before that. And it was the first for my wife, Linda. And she said, um, uh, she, she, I remember getting to her door and she said uh, she had a glass of Dubonnet, I think, before I got there, maybe two. And when I, she came to the door, she looked at me and she said, not bad. <laughs> she was just a little... <laughs> <laughs> bubbly from the the Dubonnet, and uh, and so uh, that, that was uh, we hit it off, and and then I tell you I mean, what is maybe some, what instigated the book or the kind of thing that uh, generated my writing it was that after we uh, kind of dated for about a month, I had to go off and do a film. And I said, to, I said to Linda, I don't think we should, I don't want to, you know, keep you, uh, I don't want you to limit yourself while I'm gone. And, and, and we have only been together a while anyway, so I don't think we should, you know, keep it just exclusive with us. And uh, <clears throat> then I got home to my apartment that night and she called me and she said, uh, uh, you don't know what you're missing. And I remember, I don't know what I thought about that, but when I got back from, I think it was Portland, Oregon, when I was working, I said, uh, I, I called her immediately. And, and the short version of that is that I've spent the last 42 years knowing exactly what I would have been missing if I hadn't been lucky enough to call back when I got back from Portland. And that's that's the the uh, character who is the protagonist of all the rest of my life. He goes, he gets a, he gets a, you know all the machinations. I won't go into it. He gets back in time to 1974 when he first had a good chance to be um, uh, an actor, and he had some things going for him. And he gets another chance to do it again, and it's very exciting. And he realizes that this time he knows what to do and what not to do to do it right pretty much. And then he kind of stops and says, but there's no, and the, and the wife's name in the book is Samantha. His name is Danny. And he says, but there's no Samantha anymore. I don't have her in my life. And she was what my life had become, or at least that was, you know, an intertwining part of my identity, my whole, you know, reason for being. And so, at a very short time into being back in that year, 1974, he says, this is no good. I've got to try to get back if I, if I can possibly imagine. And it's a you know, time travel setting. So uh, he finds, a, a, eventually finds a way to go about getting back to uh, Samantha and the time he came from by producing a play, uh, or rather a film, which is the only thing he really knows is, you know, the, the film business, the theatrical and acting business. And he goes, uh, he, and I won't, you know, give away the ending, but that's, that's his whole motivation. And basically what the story is, aside from being a, a, a time travel story, which is all the, the, the usual, signposts of that um, of that genre are not basically what the book's about basically it is as maybe you've gathered a, a love story and uh, and 
Uh, that pretty much tells you, I think, the kind of a general outline of what it is. He uh, is a lot about the movie making business at that time in Los Angeles. There's a lot about Los Angeles, and there's a lot about you know, there's a good deal of exploring of, you know, what his life was when he was with Samantha and what it is now when he, again, when he doesn't know much of anything and has, you know, a, a callow youth's um, sort of lack of having his bearings in this world. Not that any of us really do, I don't <laughs> But, mm -hmm. you know, he really doesn't know, again, but this time he realizes how much he doesn't know and that uh, and that instigates him to move forward and uh, and uh, you know and get back to the love of his life and that's what the book's about like like you said it really it time travel is an element in the story but it really is more about those relationships and um absolutely d decisions that we make in our life and, and what those decisions mean for not only our life's course but also relationships um initial inspiration to tell this story because it is besides the time travel i'm assuming you have not gone back in time but besides that it's very autobiographical <laughs> what was yeah. your inspiration to write the story well you know i i think i i, I remember that uh, the, the, the title of the book which was i don't know something that just floated into my brain years and years ago and uh about my wife linda which was uh it really was the start of my, uh, I had psychotherapy and all the, the cliche stuff for actors and people who, many people anyway, who had similar experiences to mine. And, uh, and then I, as Linda and I were together, I think as often happens, you take on many of the colors of the person you're with most of the time. <clears throat> I think that's the basis for, you know, psychoanalysis you know you you have a form a transference relationship with the therapist that kind of thing but but i think when you have a close and uh and you're lucky enough to be in a relationship that's that's a positive and affirmative you know thrust to it and your life gets better and better then that's you know that's never far away from my mind uh linda and i have you know our kind of magic hour at night which is also repeated in the book and we just talk and have a glass of wine or whatever and uh and it's always you know a renewed pleasure and i can't put it any other way except well maybe i could say the word joy and uh and that has been a constant inspiration and it just finally dawned on me that that should be a book for you know out of the area of what i know about life and my life and uh and I thought that was worth sharing. And uh, I think love stories, you know, nice love stories. And it's not a bodice ripper or a dystopian urban thing. It's just uh, about two people who are in love. And uh, and when he gets back in time, he is, you know, there is a there is a temptation. There's a, a young woman in 1974 who's, you know, very in uh, the old fashioned seductor's way, uh, tempting, uh, but, uh, and not to give anything away about that either, but that's uh, it's it, it ends up not being as important as as the love story that he wants to be reinvolved with and uh, get back to. Mm -hmm. And one thing I like about that love story is that uh, yes, he he goes back in time to kind of the beginning of that relationship, but bookended is the relationship as it is of of an older couple, and you don't always see that as a love story um you know that, yeah, that yeah. point where you've reached the point where you've reached that stage in your relationship and things are maybe not fully settled but you know you've kind of fallen into a, a routine and that can be just as beautiful as the oh. the tumult of early re relationships oh absolutely and my personal opinion is if you if you kind of working at it right and allowing each other the you know the all the things that one should to be in a constructive relationship that, that if you're lucky enough that that I feel it's happened with me and I can't I shouldn't make assumptions on anybody else but I, I think it really is uh, something that's we all think about when we're young well, it would be nice with this kind of person that I'm involved with if it works out that we are still in love you know 30 40 50 whatever how many years into the future and I think 
uh, I think that's an attractive uh, story uh, idea, and uh, that's why I wrote it because I had that lucky, lucky, blessed, whatever you choose to call it, experience. Yeah. yeah. What What does your wife think of of your story being told in this in this book? Oh, she's she's all for it. She she does. Uh, you know, I haven't. Uh, yeah, she's she 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 likes it. She's uh, helping me publicize it, you know, to the extent that I can. And uh, she's uh, uh, she she's helping with. She's a, a designer, uh, a, a graphic designer, a jewelry designer, and so on. And uh, she's uh, but she has time to help me, and she enjoys it apparently because she keeps doing it and uh, good naturedly. And uh, so she's pleased about it. That's yeah. the short answer. <laughs> yeah. Good. Obviously, I don't know Rick and his wife, Linda. I, you know, just met Rick for the podcast, but uh, I do enjoy listening to him talk about his relationship with Linda because it's very obvious that uh, he loves and respects her. And so it, it just comes through. And I think that's lovely. So anyway, we're going to take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about um, the dog. Tally, who is mentioned in the description of the book, if that name sounds familiar. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Rick Lenz about his novel, Hello, Rest of My Life. And we're turning our attention to the non-human character of the book, the dog Tally. Let's get back to the interview. I want to bring up one other character in the book because it's a character that appears early. Um, you know, I, with time travel books, you don't want to give too much away. So it's always hard to talk about them. But there is a character in the book who is not a human character. Can you talk a little bit more about Tally the dog? Yeah, I can tell you that uh, that that was the first thing I realized after writing a draft. When I wrote the first draft, Tally was not in it, and uh, so I I suddenly I think I said to Linda one night and said this this uh, needs another close intimate point of view, and uh, and and then I realized it had to be. I think Linda helped me come up with this idea. In fact, that it should be a dog, and uh, so we had had a dog, a, a, actually a poodle, uh, for uh, 16 years, and he was just a treasure. And so I, the the dog Tally in the book is uh, is part poodle and part something else. And, uh, I didn't want to make him all poodle because you know I didn't want him to be a snotty dog, and some people do think of poodles that way, although. From my point of view, there's nothing kind of more wonderful than a wonderful standard poodle. But yeah, Tally is Danny's familiar, and actually Sam's, Samantha's too. So uh, yeah, he was he was the familiar, and he's very critical when he needs to be, and he's very helpful and uh, insightful, and he's the better part of yourself, you know, for Danny's character. And uh, for the most part, he's wiser until he says one time, I think later on, he says. You know, I don't know as much about these kind of human areas as you do. So why don't you go ahead on your own and that kind of thing. And um, it's a wonderful care. I, well, I, 
He's a wonderful character to me. I'm very fond of Tally. I wish I had him here with me right now. I, I, I just thought Tally was a good um, uh, familiar, and I also thought kind of a foil as well to Danny's character. Um, right. And gives Danny, uh, you know, sometimes when it's being told from one character's point of view, it helps to have, like, oh. a dog so the, the person can talk to the dog and is not just talking to him or herself. Right, ex exactly. And, it, you know, it just if you do it at all well, then the that character kind of comes to life and you you're uh you've got something to bounce off he's he's the sancho panza he's uh i think very useful and very fun i just really enjoyed writing that character yeah i i can imagine um you mentioned before that you know you tend to write things that don't involve a, an extensive amount of research but there is some talk in the beginning about um if not researching time travel itself talking about the forms of time travel that tend to appear in novels. So was that right. an area of research that you did? Oh, absolutely. But I'd written a book before. Uh, it was called The Alexandrite. It's about, it's about a, another actor who goes uh, um, back in time, another, my other time travel book. And uh, he gets cast in a movie in Bus Stop uh, in, uh, opposite Marilyn Monroe who he meets, and uh, it was her birthday yesterday. I talked to somebody about that. And uh, 96, I believe she was, uh, would have been. And anyway, I did a lot of research. I wish I could, uh, I could, I won't run to see my bookcase, but there are some books in there. And so I, yeah, I read a lot of physics and, uh, and other time travel books I've read, but but they, that doesn't, re isn't very, really very useful in writing time travel, I don't think. I mean, I, I love Time and Again and uh, by Jack Finney and uh, you know, two or three of those. Yeah, I did a lot of research back then, but this time I, kind of, I, I'd done enough so that it, I really knew what I had to do for this one. And uh, so for this book, I did not do a lot of research. As I say, it was mostly kind of uh, to do with my my whole lifetime in, in Hollywood and New York before that. and. Uh, and uh, and with my wife, with my wife Linda. Often, when you you sit down to write a novel, you'll have an idea of the characters and their motivations. Right. Obviously, you are one of the main characters. Your wife is another character, but they're fictionalized versions of yourself, right? Right. Um, so, how do you go about fictionalizing and 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 doing character development on people that are? You and your wife yeah. is that a different process, or did you think about that much? I didn't, you know, it's one of those things that you don't really consciously, at least in, in my case, writing this book, I didn't consciously think about that. I think it's, I, I can, if I can make a reference to acting, it's, uh, I've known actors who have kept, you know, had long lists of things, their character, their back story and their back life and all that kind of thing. And I find that usually it's not the most productive, usually, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a um, it's something that needs to be uh, organic and immediate. And in this case, because the two those two characters anyway were just part of my very being, I didn't do anything but just begin from there and put you know what I know of myself and what I know of Linda into into Danny and Samantha and and to to make a make a shorter story of all this babbling it's uh i didn't think much about it i just wrote it and what i do often when i'm writing scenes is or writing characters is i'll, I'll sit down and write i don't know five ten pages of conversation between them and another character i know better and see where that leads me and i get an idea of character that way and uh and I may, along the way, develop another character, the other character in the scene, scene or scenes that I'm writing. I don't know if that's unique or not, but I, as I said, I was a playwright, so I mm -hmm. think probably that was my experience, and it just helps me develop, you know, what a person is thinking by what they say in a given circumstance. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a few minutes ago that that you'd written another time travel or, or another novel with time travel in it. What about that trope do you feel draws you to including it in your novels? 
it's it's not so much the thing itself although i i just when it came out when well when i i don't know i think it, i don't know when time and again came out but i read it shortly after it was published i believe a long time ago and uh it just really it really rocked me i just loved it i loved going back to i guess it was 1880s or so 1890s in uh, new york and i was living there when i when i wrote it and so I just love the whole idea of it, but it's it wasn't so much the idea of writing time travel that interested me or that that grabbed me in the creative bone. It was uh, by the creative bone. It was uh, just my life. You know, a lot of the interesting thing that I had to write about continues to be that era of my life, which was my active uh, time as a as an actor and uh and it's a world that i know and uh, i don't know is a lot of people who are writing about it uh i don't know many other people who are writing in that area uh at this time anyway who uh i have not read anything kind of like what i write and so that's it wasn't time travel it was it was the idea of that of that experience and and then if you invent a story that takes place in that time uh, in the case of the Alexandrite and, and Hello, Rest of My Life, uh, both both now, the, the, the current time and, uh, and uh, the early, late 60s, early 70s, uh, maybe, into the, maybe into the 80s are, are what I really know and love to write about. And it just works best as a setting for then telling a wonderful story. If I can come up with a wonderful story and those are, you know, those are gems to, to pray for <laughs> mm -hmm. well and it's you know the, it, time travel is an element but it's not i wouldn't classify this as a time like it's not sci-fi it's not a science fiction book it's no not at all you know not it's all. romance if you would i mean it's more than romance but you understand it you know it's more about the relationships it's character driven yeah um, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. are you working on um another novel now or are you working on anything right now uh, yeah, I'm writing. A, I'm. I wrote a, a screenplay uh, quite a few years ago, and it was based on <clears throat> nothing about Hollywood or acting or any of that. I wrote a screenplay about a Southwest area, mostly Arizona, uh, mystery uh, with a, a, a detective who's uh, half Native American and half regular white guy. And uh, and he has a therapist, another therapist character, <clears throat> who is uh, who is um, full uh, Apache, and uh, they that's the the uh, relationship. And uh, so it's a it's a mystery adventure thriller uh, with a little bit more in the way of uh, you know well thriller stuff in it. My, this book that the rest of my life is not would not anywhere near qualify as a thriller but that's the basic basis for the story and it's really exciting and i just finished my first draft and it's now being edited and uh, uh so it's an exciting new moment for me yeah that does sound fun yeah, yeah. time for our final break of the podcast when we come back we'll be talking about uh the path that rick took to writing novels instead of screenplays um and plays so stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc book review podcast and i'll be right back golden state media concepts sci-fi podcast together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction from episodes of star trek star wars to the walking dead resident evil all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of marvel or dc the golden state media concepts sci-fi podcast you'll never look at science fiction the same way again Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Rick Lenz. 
And so you've, you've answered this a little bit, but um, you've written for a long time in various capacities. What was the final impetus that made you decide to try writing in rather than writing plays or um, screenplays, but rather sitting down and writing a novel for publication? Uh, I started in the late 70s. I started writing uh, books. And, uh, and I've got to tell you, I probably have a stack as high as my, as my, my head, and I'm quite tall. Uh, of stuff that I've tried and have failed at. And uh, it took me a long time. And so to go answer your question, finally, it's, it's, uh, I, by the time I met Linda in uh, eight, 1980, um, we were, uh, I was writing uh, constantly and I didn't give up uh, uh, the acting or just put it aside basically until about 20 years ago. And, uh, and I've been writing novels, and I wrote a, a, a memoir about 10 years ago called North of Hollywood. And uh, that was a lot of fun and very, very easy. So I realized, I think, doing that even more, that it was kind of fun to write from, you know, the, the, my, my driver's seat, as it were. And that, that made it become more, you know, I, I used to rewrite old stuff. I've given up doing that. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I throw it away. And that was a big lesson for me. And uh, and as my a good friend of mine, I had a playwriting uh, partner one time for a while. He would say sometimes when he ran out of something to say, he would say clunk. So that's my clunk for this moment. <laughs> Um, well, that, that leads into my next question, uh, which, you, you know, you said you, you used to try to rewrite old stuff, but now you don't. Um, so uh, that's a lesson that you've learned from your experience. What advice would you give to aspiring um, writers? And that could be people who want to write a novel or people who want to write a play. I mean, you've got a lot of experience. So what advice would you give? Sure. Uh, well, first, it's what every uh, writer, uh, writer, I believe, or most would say, read, and read, and read some more. It just is, my wife and I read to each other at night, uh, every night we have for, I guess, 20 years. And uh, that's that's useful. And I also keep reading whatever book I'm reading and put it down and read the next one. Uh, it's just the most vital thing there is. The other one is, I've read a lot of books by writers, uh, Richard Russo, Stephen King, Anne Lamott, uh, 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 Elmore Leonard's 10 rules uh, popped to, to mind. Uh, he said, uh, don't, don't, you don't use adverbs. Uh, he said, uh, if, for example, if, if, you, uh, if you look off and say, and he saw, he saw, his 15 best friends drop dead on the horizon. You don't have to have it. He, he suddenly sees 15 friends drop dead on the horizon. You just need the news. And, and another thing he said in that same area was, don't use all hell broke loose, those kind of things. There are lots of, there are lots of, there's lots of good advice out there and there's lots to be learned. I never, I don't think I ever took an, a writing a course after college took three or four there, uh, but um, I think it's just a matter then after you do it of, of writing yourself, uh, writing, you know, doing your own writing and then putting it down for a while and then picking it up and seeing what you think. I know Patty Shaevsky, another memory I have, it said he would put something down that he'd written uh, for six months, I believe he said, and then pick it up and strike out all the adverbs. I'm sure he didn't strike them all out. And then he said he'd put it down again for another six months and strike out all the wisdom. And I think that's really good advice. I know because I, I had a tendency to want to educate the reader and uh, you, this is a novel is not where you go to be educated. It doesn't mean you don't want to be write a smart novel that has something to pass on but you don't want to, you know, it's a, it's a playwriting rule is all. You must not have any of your characters preach to the audience because they hate that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you want you you want the research to show, but not be like we started like an encyclopedia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. When you um, read, when you take the time to read for yourself, or when you're reading with your wife, who are your go-to authors and genres? Oh my, uh, I we do skip all over the place. Uh, I I like um, uh, Aroki Murakami. Um, I think I mentioned Richard Russo. Um, um, just walking right to my bookcase with you in my right hand. I read uh, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing, and uh, and I don't, we often go back to uh, classics too. I love revisiting. Well, we read uh, uh, Don Quixote, both books, uh, a couple of years ago, and we recently read uh, John Cheever. This was Linda and I both, and we, it was uh, the Wapshot Chronicles. Uh, I, I, we really tend to the Tender Bar, which was made into a not very uh, representative or you know successful movie, in my opinion. Uh, at least it's not as good as the book. Uh, uh, there's Stephen King on writing, you know, just lots and lots. John Updike, uh, anybody named John, John, John. Uh, 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 Steinbeck, uh, uh, and, and Tyler, and Lamont. Uh, and I just love, you know, I just love all that's available to us. And I don't, I don't read a lot of current stuff because I do, you know, if somebody says you should read this book or that book, I, I will do that. But uh, very often I find myself going back to Red Huckleberry Finn, if I mentioned that a couple of years ago. Uh, again, and uh, it's worth, you know, it's, it's not, you're not going to lose time by duplicating your effort if you read a book, you know, a really good book like that for a second time. Uh, that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. No, I agree on that. Um, I know that you have a website, so um, if you can share that website and if you're, um, if you're active on any social media where people can interact with you. Sure. I'm, uh, I'm on um uh, my website is ricklens.com and I'm on Facebook, both professional page, uh, Rick Lenz author and uh, personal. And I'm on TikTok recently, uh, uh, just giving it a try. And it's, 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 it's interesting because uh, Linda has just been uh, uh, filming me or taping whatever you, uh, video, doing videos uh, for that in the minute or two of just conversation and during our magic hour and that's i've enjoyed doing that and uh, i do youtubes uh, i'm going to do more because i know it's part of the territory for being an author these days all right thank you for that um so rick we've talked about a lot of different things during our time together and it's been so much fun Uh, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you had hoped to bring up I just, uh, I, I have, one of the things I've decided on TikTok, I've just been chatting with Linda and then she uh, video, does the video of it. But one of the things I realized I should do because I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I've got a lot of experience, which is a, uh, a, an invasive way, a way to avoid saying how old I am. I think it's a good time for me to start talking about, you know, to do a few uh, you, YouTubes or uh, TikToks or whatever about uh, my creative experience because I'm I'm also an artist and uh, and uh, so creative arts is my passion and I'll be doing more and more of kind of that sort of thing on those uh, outlets that I just mentioned. So the only thing I would say is that is that that's my area and that's what I hope I bring to everything that I write now and everything that I have written is uh, the passion of a, of a person who uh, realized early on that science and that kind of thing, which is, you know, which is, I wish more people understood and believed in these days, but it, it is not my immediate passion except in my appreciation of it. My passion is is the arts and uh, it's really deep-seated and informs 
all my work and I hope that comes through in my writing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That actually reminded me of one other question that I have for you, and that is your author photo in the back of the book. Um, that is uh, an art artist's rendering. And who did that that picture? That was Linda. She did oh. that. Oh, it's beautiful. And, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, I've spent some money on professional photography, uh, both as an actor and writer. And uh, that's just the picture I like right now. And that, uh, publishing entity likes. Yeah, well, I mean, you can tell that, that it was drawn with love, so it may, I, I don't blame you for using it. Um, <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to oh, me. You're I welcome. Really sir. appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you again to Rick for joining me to talk about the book, but also um, we had a delightful conversation before and after we were recording. So thank you to him for that. I really enjoyed my time with him the whole time, not only the interview, but the whole conversation was great. So I am appreciative of that. If you are a fan of, um, well, if you're a fan of time travel books, but books that are not primarily about time travel. Time travel is just an element that kind of fuels the uh, overarching plot. Then you should definitely check out Hello, Rest of My Life. Also, if you are a fan of um, books that feature romance, but in a slightly different way than a romance novel, this isn't a sci-fi book. This isn't a romance book. This is a book that has both of those elements in it, um, but really it is about relationships. It is about decisions how those decisions uh, affect our lives, how any decision on any given day might affect the course of our lives. And what would you do differently, if anything, if you could do something over, uh, but you knew that it might affect the, 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 the future that is what was your, your, your present. That was very wibbly wobbly timey wimey but what decisions would you make differently if any is a good question if you like those kinds of questions then you should definitely read hello rest of my life thank you as always to you my listeners so very much appreciate you and i hope that you'll join me on the next episode when i will be speaking to author gregory eric phillips about his book um a season in lights that will be on the next episode. If you are a fan of this podcast, then please, of course, do as I always ask you, um, like, subscribe, follow, etc. You will always know when there is a new episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Also, reviews really help us, so please leave one of those if you have not on whatever platform that you listen to this podcast on. It's very helpful to get the podcast out to more book lovers. And then, of course, follow on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and TikTok. Love hearing from you. Let me know what you're up to. Thank you so much to Rick. Thank you so much to you. I hope that you're having a great week so far. I hope that can, that week continues to go well or improves if it didn't start out with a bang. But most of all, as always, I hope that that week involves plenty of time for you to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks.